Good day, everybody. Welcome to Board Game Giants, the vintage version. And uh, this is a show where we talk to people who are vintage board game collectors, and we get to know them a little bit. And today, uh, we have Christian on, and he is a f person that I met on my uh, Facebook page who is a board game collector. And so, hey, Christian, it is good to have you on the show. How are you today? I'm doing good. It's good to be here. It's good to have you. Uh, I wanted to say thank you also for all your support after my channel had gotten hacked a few months back. Thanks for messaging me and uh, just doing that. It meant a lot. Just wanted to say thank you for that, for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely, of course, because, I mean, you're one of the my favorite uh, channels to watch, and I was pretty distraught when I saw that happen. In fact, I, like I've told you, I've been toying with the idea of, yeah, I do have a channel, but I don't have but maybe one video on it. It's a very old video of me uh, sledding in my backyard when it iced over here on a little uh, like a little radio flyer type toboggan sled thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's the only thing I have on there, and it's not edited or anything. So I I, I haven't dabbled, but I've been wanting to start a channel to do board game reviews. But I just especially after you had yours hacked, I. I've been kind of hesitant to do it. Plus, I, I don't know as much about editing the videos and things like that. I'd like to learn. And so one day I, I would like to try to, you know, do a channel. Um, and if you ever do get a channel started, please let me know, and I'll be sure to link up with you on there and uh, try to give you some support and stuff because it looks like you got a lot of games back there. Oh, yes. <laughs> much to my <laughs> wife's chagrin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many do you have? Well, I tried. Uh, I tried to get a count one day, and I think I, I, I think I tallied around 300 or so. But I'm thinking right now I'm probably getting closer to four. I mean, I don't have an exact number yet, but I, I, I'm thinking that it's probably getting closer to 400. But it's definitely over 300. Yeah, and those things collect pretty quick. <laughs> you know, once you start yes. collecting, the next thing you know, your entire garage is full. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've got at least uh, one, two, three. There's, I'm in the garage right now, and there's three uh, shelving units full of board games. And then I actually had to spill over into a, another room. Uh, there's uh, at least a uh, couple of shelf, shelving units in this other room that I have, and and I can, you know, I can transition to that other room to show that collection as well. But I mean, that's that's the bulk of my collection is in these two rooms. Yeah, it looks like our garage is pretty much full right now, and uh, we've I've had to sell a lot of stuff off. So, uh, what got right. you into collecting the the board games, the older games? What when, when did you start? Well, it started when I was younger. I was probably I want to say maybe five or six years old, if I remember correctly, uh, back in the nineteen seventies. I'm dating myself <laughs> by saying that, but. Uh, Anyway, it was really my mom who, who's no longer with me. I, I lost her back in 2014. Yeah. Uh, and what, what it was, was I remember the first couple of gateway games that got me started was Monopoly. I, I know Monopoly gets a bad rap. Everybody talks trash about it, but, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you know, I enjoyed it because my mom bought the, you know, just the regular plain Jane Monopoly. There, obviously, back then there was no special editions or any kind of uh, specialized Monopoly game. And uh, we played that, and I remember enjoying it. And another game that I remember her getting was Mousetrap, you know, kind of one of the not – the, not the ideal one, but the, the later one by, I guess, is Milton Bradley or whatever uh, yeah. version. And uh, – I remember we played it and I remember at first playing with just the, the parts to it. And then I, I got into wanting to play the game. The other thing that got me liking board games, especially the vintage ones was every time we would play a board game, you know, me and my mom, uh, if I lost, I remember I would throw a big fit. I would just make a big deal out of it that I lost. <laughs> and so uh, she, she finally got to where she, I noticed for a while I was on a winning streak and, and then I asked her, I said, how come I'm winning so much? And she's like, well, I'm letting you win. And I'm like, well, ah. why? And she said, because I don't want to listen to you whine and gripe and complain. And she said, it's just a game. 
you know, it, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, you know, I mean, it, it's just all about having fun playing the game. And the, I, I feel like I grew up a little bit that day when she told me that but actually sitting down around a table, because I remember doing that as a kid as well. You know, we'd go over to a friend's house, they'd pull out a board game or something and we would play and everybody would be laughing and cutting up and making jokes. And it just made for a really good time. Yeah. Um, board games are great. I mean, I think they're a great way to socialize. I think it's a great way to, you know, especially if you're going out on a date or something like that with somebody. My wife and I play board games and card games all the time, and we still do. You know, it's right. just it's a great way to socialize, and it's a lot of fun, um, especially with some of the older games that are just, you know, larger than life. So uh, right, and you, and you mentioned that you mentioned that with the older games, you, the, your question about what got me more into the vintage games is yeah. the the games nowadays like. They just, they're kind of lackluster for my liking. I mean, the, the games, the older vintage games just have an appeal that these, I'm not trying to put the newer games down. I'm just saying for me, you know, the time period that I grew up, uh, the games that they're coming out with now are pretty basic. And the ones from when I was growing up, it's like, there's just, they're unique. And there's just, there's a certain appeal to them that the games nowadays just don't have. Yeah, there's a lot of games out there. A lot of the, the ones are Meeple-based, and, you know, it, it just mm -hmm. depends on how you are. I'm not much of a fan of the Meeple-based games, and maybe I just haven't played enough. Um, but I was saying before, I'm so used to some of these larger-than-life games like Battle Masters that are just huge, and they've got all this great artwork and stuff. And, you know, and I always said, you know, if I were to find, like, a dinosaur game, I would love to see dinosaurs in it. And a lot of them that I see nowadays – don't really have that. They just have boards and little pieces and, you know, things that you move around. So I kind of miss that. But there are games out there like that still. I just – that's what I like about the older ones too. So mm -hmm. speaking of them, uh, what are your favorites or a couple of your favorites? Well, uh, the like, like I mentioned, it's, it's kind of hard to narrow it down to just one – whole board game that's like my absolute favorite I, yeah. I could probably go with the top two that are probably you know more of my favorite it would be dark tower and fireball island and the reason being is dark tower you know the, the, the whole story behind it how you know that they, 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 people came up they got sued because those people came up with the idea mm -hmm. they proposed to milton bradley and they rejected it and then all of a sudden they came out with a game that was supposedly similar and so they got sued and so not that you know not as many copies were made and they didn't stay on the shelves very long so obviously it's a more rare board game and i'm glad to have it in my collection which is it's complete by the way I, I, well actually it was missing a few of the red pegs and i had a I had an extra older battleship game that was actually my wife's that when she played with her brother growing up and mm -hmm. uh i took a few of the red pegs from that and they're the same exact peg so uh, i was able to complete you know that board game and you know it still has the original replacement light bulb and the the tube to remove the light bulb uh so like i said it i'm glad to have that in my collection it, it's unique it, it combines a board game with the uh old school electronic tower and the, and the artwork is just unique and phenomenal i think that uh it's just a very unique board game like i said i i got that and then fireball island i was in our local when, when i was a kid uh i had always wanted fireball island when i saw the commercials i'm like i gotta have that game and my mom's like no nah, it's too much money and uh so we we never ended up getting it and because uh, it like you said it's, it's that's one of those it's larger than life and one day we were at our local Goodwill and I saw it on a shelf and it said had a price tag on it for five ninety nine. I grabbed it. I said, I'm not leaving the store without this. I told my wife, I don't care if you get mad. I'm not I'm not leaving the store without this game. That's that's amazing, man. I mean, that game I've seen it go for like two hundred fifty dollars. You know, I think I got right. my copy for about one hundred and twenty and I had to replace some of the pieces and stuff. But it's definitely a, a game. And Dark Tower, of course, is a game I really like a lot. And, you know, it has right. a well, when I, worry, too. When I, when I told my wife that, because, uh, you know, she gives me grief a lot about, uh, you know, the collection I have. She's like, you got way too many board games and you need to start thinking about getting rid of some. And uh, I'm like, well, you do realize that uh, some of these I can mm -hmm. I could conceivably sell for two or three hundred dollars, like Fireball Island, uh, Dark Tower, Hero Quest. And mm -hmm. she's like, because I got Hero Quest for about sixty dollars. 
I yeah. was able to find somebody that had a complete copy and uh, I got it for 60 bucks. And uh, when I told her that her jaw kind of dropped and she's like, what? Somebody will actually pay that kind of money for a board game. And I said, yeah, if you find the right buyer. And then I had, I, I was telling a friend of mine about it and he said, yeah, but you actually have to sell the game to get that money. <laughs> when I got hero quest, I had to actually trade about 30 or 40 games for it. Uh, I, you know, I had, just the, the, the lady was looking to make a collection and she had the game. Her family didn't want her to get rid of it. She said, hey, it's my game. Let me get rid of it, which I'm glad she did. I just got a – we made a good deal. I think I probably spent about $50 total to get all these games and thrift and all. But speaking of games, you want to show us your collection, Mr. Christian? Yes. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll start over here. Uh, let me flip this camera around yeah. so you can see. Uh, so there's – one copy up there of Access and Allies. I had to get two copies of that. To, you know, that's one of the, the from the Game Master series. That's one of okay. the original, uh, the Access and Allies. So I got two copies of it so that I could get one complete copy out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, there's just a plain Skittle scoreball. Uh, th this one's kind of like a reproduction. It's not an original Skittle scoreball. There's a small uh, billiards table. Uh, I actually picked up this Stop Thief game because I remember I, I had that when I was younger, and it's, it's a pretty awesome game. And yeah. I got that pretty cheap for like, I want to say maybe 10 or 15 bucks uh, in, in a, a neighboring city, town. I was able to pick that up pretty cheap. This one here is Sharky's Diner. It's exactly like the wow. Jaws game that came out back in the, uh, I guess, what was it? The late seventies, early eighties. Uh, but this one actually has extra pieces. War of the ring. It's on the edge, on the right edge, like past. Jeopardy. Oh yes. Yes. I actually got that, uh, at a rummage sale when I was, I want to say I was a teenager and somehow I managed to hold on to it all these years and it's complete. Wow. I mean, it's punched. But I mean, it's complete and uh, it, it's an original from SPI. You know, it's not it's not the one that you know they came out with later on. This is this is the original, and I'm for, hanging on to that. Oh, I'm sorry. I think that goes for some money too. Now I, I can't remember how much, but um, right, yeah, cool. right. So, like I said, I've I've got you know some of these other games. Of course, Gestures is a little bit newer. Uh, I had never even heard of this limits, but I saw it at a, uh, this Captain John's sport fishing tournament game. I had seen it in a thrift store, so I picked it up and it was complete. So I was like, well, that, you know, that's cool. Maybe one day I'll, I'll actually get, find some like-minded people and play it. And uh, this of course is that star Wars VCR game. Uh, and then the, here's superpowers. I think this, I had never heard of this, but this is yeah. reminds me. It's like, kind of identical to Axis and Allies. It's the same kind of in the same kind of vein as Axis and Allies. Yeah. So it's a you know it's a world domination game. It's kind of like Risk and Axis and Allies. Uh, I've got this version of Clue. I, I do have a few versions of Clue. Uh, you know, one that I'm glad that I have too is this uh, restoration hardware one here. Um, oh. that has like the the rooms. You see the little it'll have the little diorama of the rooms. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it's kind of gold plated and it's a it's a big wooden board. And I picked that up for about twenty five dollars. Uh, of course, I've got all the King's Men. I've got several versions of Monopoly. I've got an original, an older version of Life, uh, yeah. Lost Treasure, um, Songburst, uh, Hugger Mugger, Je the Tycho version of Jeopardy, uh, Times to Remember. Uh, of course, I've got just a, a Whitman's, just a plain Jane chess game here. Uh, and then, of course, uh, I have Sorry Sliders. Uh, my daughter and I played that before, and we enjoy it. Uh, I have a Lord of the Rings chess set. That's it's not it's not a high quality chess set. The pieces are plastic, but they're they're made to look like the characters. And so I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, I have input here. Uh, you know, that's just one of those Milton Bradley games. It, it's got the little uh, pieces that look like little computer chips. And uh, I've had that one for a good while. Uh, I have the deluxe version of Wheel of Fortune. Uh, I've got, you know, a little knockoff battleship game, uh, Travel Connect 4, Poker Tiles, Corridor. My daughter and I have played this Corridor. That's a pretty fun game where you put the little wooden fences up to try to block the other 
uh, yeah. person from getting to the other side. Uh, I've got some, you know, just card games here, Monopoly card games. I've got Big Boggle. Uh, I've got a set that's like a casino set that's miniature, like a travel one that, you know, you can, and it even has a little small roulette wheel. Um, I've got stage two. Here's another one that, that, uh, my daughter and I enjoyed playing was lie detector. Yeah, that's a cool um, one. Yeah, we have that one too. Yeah. So I have like this game here, the, uh, the, the generals that's basically identical to Stratego but it's electronic and it has what's called an arbitrator where you put the pieces, you, you take the pieces that you're attacking and you put them on the side of the board and the computer will determine who wins. Uh, this right here in this Amazon box is uh, broadsides and boarding parties. Uh, uh, the box was, when I ordered it off of eBay, it would just had a piece of the box, like part of the box in there. And I think it is missing one of the masts but other than that, it's complete. It has yeah. everything else in there. Uh, yeah. Of course, I've got uh, Dragon Master, you know, that card game. And the the guy, I, I think, what's his name? Bob Pepper, I think. He's the one that did uh, the artwork for Dark Tower. He also did the artwork for this uh, Dragon Master card game. And I, I, I remember watching your review of it yeah, and your, your demonstration of it. And I enjoyed that. And then, of course, I have a few of these, uh, you know, in the wooden boxes that they, they put out. Uh, you know, some of these games like Risk, and you can't hardly read this, but this is Stratego mm -hmm. uh, in the little wooden the little wooden box editions. And this is, this oh. is a newer version of Skittle Pool, but I actually have the – I also had picked up the original with uh, Don Adams on it. So I have both, the original. And the thing I like about this one is the, the original one by Aurora that has Don Adams on the cover. It only has the, the – uh, one of these – but this one actually has it on both sides. Wow. So that's kind of what I liked about this one was it, you know, you, you know, you can actually go on the other side and aim and try to, uh, you know, hit the billiard balls into the pockets. You're not limited to just being on the one side. I, I've got the star Wars Epic duels. Yeah. Uh, that one was listed as complete, but it was actually missing two of the hit point markers. I just replicated them. Got star Wars Stratego and then uh, I've got two versions, I mean, two copies of the Life, uh, Star Wars Life, A Jedi's Path, Great. because I did the same thing. Yeah, I had to I had to actually make one copy out of two. So that's another one that I did that with. Sure. Uh, and then another Star Wars game I have is this, uh, the Sarlacc Pit, you know, Battle of the yeah, Sarlacc yeah, yeah. Pit game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so that's another one I have. I've got this uh, black box. I actually have another copy of it. Uh, just for extra pieces. Uh, I have this, this is kind of neat. Uh, you know, I've got the hero scape, but this is the Marvel uh, version of it. I've got Coca-Cola chess set. You know, that, that was pretty neat that I was able to get that. Cause I, I also collect Coca-Cola stuff. And so that kind of combined, you know, uh, both of those things. Uh, I, and I think this game here, Lionheart, I think it's pretty similar to battle masters. Kind of, yeah. Some ways. Kind of similar. Yeah. It's smaller. Uh, so I do have that. I've, I've got this game, the the, the Inventors, uh, the Rural Game of Summer. This is another one that I got. I got this off of eBay. I didn't even know it existed, this James Bond game, 007. It's yeah. actually like a little tile-based game, and it has poker chips. And I, I thought it was unique, so that's kind of why I picked it up. Uh, it, it, was, it was neat. Uh, I also picked this up, the – Kool-Aid kids trivia game. I actually played this with my daughter and some of the trivia was, you know, obviously it's more for people from back, you know, my generation because some of the questions my daughter definitely didn't know the answer to. So I was kind of like, well, you know, some of this is going to be really hard for you because uh, you don't know the answer. Uh, I do have the electronic version of Stratego here, yeah. uh, you know, from Milton Bradley. That's kind of similar to that general's game, except that, you know, uh, it's a little different, but I mean, it, I thought it was unique, so I, I picked it up. Uh, and then I have this newer version of Risk. Uh, I have this one here. It's kind of old and beat up, but it's a uh, 4 Good Buddy. It's just kind of reminded me of my childhood, you know, growing up in the 70s and 80s. CB was big back then, and so that's kind of why I picked that up. Uh, I would actually have to go to another room where I have a couple extra shelving units. Oh, that's okay. If you want, you can just yeah. send a couple of pictures or whatever. 
and I can yeah, I, 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 I actually uh, I think I actually mailed you the the pictures. Do you want to plan some time on trying to possibly upload uh, videos onto a cha my channel or create another channel specifically for that for board games? Because I'm definitely interested in doing reviews of board games and uh, you know unboxings and and things like that. Well, I look forward to seeing it whenever you get it up. But yeah, keep in touch with me. So sure. uh, thanks, Christian. This is Christian Moss, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, we'll have another Vintage Board Game Giants uh, episode up. Uh, if you're interested in being in one, uh, just feel free to leave a comment below, and uh, we will see you all later. Christian, thanks again, buddy, and I appreciate you. You bet. Have a good one. You too. Good night. Thanks. Thanks, Christian.